and we will get started. Let's see. Oops, I've got it on the spotlight video. There we go. Okay. Awesome. So we're going to stand up. We're going to have our band and wrap it around ourselves from the back. Oops. Is it? And you're going to be holding onto it with your palms facing, facing up. And we're just going to hold on. Let me just <clears throat> do one more thing here. Make this bigger. There we go. Okay. So we're just going to start with a little breathing. And as you breathe in, I want you to pull gently forward with your arms so that you can feel the back of your rib cage pressing back into that band or that belt. So you're just going to inhale, reach the arms forward, kind of opening up the back, and then exhale, bend the elbows. So that's what we're doing. We're inhaling as we reach forward, exhaling as you bend. And if that doesn't work exactly with your, um, just let it be slack here if you have a belt and not a stretchy band. And then as you reach forward, just breathe backwards into that band. And exhale, return. Let's do four more. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, slowly bend the elbows. Inhale, reaching. Exhale, bending. And two more times, inhaling, exhaling, slowly bending, and last time reaching. Good, and now bend the elbows, and slowly start to rotate those palms backwards and elbows forward into your band, and then back to center. So you're going to inhale, we're opening up that collarbone, exhale, and return. Inhale, let it rotate from the shoulders. So we're not reaching out yet. And then exhale, return. Just a little gentle rotation in the shoulder. Exhale, return. And let's do three more. Inhale, trying to spread your collarbone open. Exhale, return. Inhale, open. Pressing those elbows forward into the band. Exhale, return. And one more time, inhale, rotate, and exhale, return. Now this time we're going to reach forward again, inhale forward, and then try to open the arms up. Exhale, bring the arms forward, and bend. So we're going to inhale, reach, and open. Exhale, forward, and return. Inhale, reach forward, opening the chest and the collarbone. Exhale forward and return. And I just have a nice wide stance with my feet. Inhale, reach forward, opening the chest. Exhale, and one more. Inhale forward, open. Exhale, close, and return. Good, and just swing. Actually, we're gonna do one more thing, reaching the arms forward. We're gonna reach forward with the arms and try to Push our back ribs into the band and let your chin drop towards your chest. And then bend the elbows and roll up. So we're inhaling and kind of doing a little ab curl standing up. Exhale, roll up. So we're inhaling and into our back rib cage. Exhale, bend the elbows and roll up. Two more times. Inhale, reach forward and round. Chin to chest. Stretching those back ribs back into the band. Two more times. Inhale forward, chin to chest. Exhale, rolling up. Last time, inhale, reach, chin to chest. And then rolling slowly up and give your shoulders a little roll. Good. Swing that band around to the front now. And let's take our arms nice and wide on the band. We're just gonna see how it feels to reach up towards the ceiling. Let's scoot back a little bit more. Reach up and lift the shoulders into your ears. And then drop the shoulders down. And you want the band slightly in front of you, so it's not way back here. Slightly in front so your shoulders can drop. And again, inhale, lift. And release. And keep a little tension in your band or your belt. Inhale, lift. Feel that length in your waist and your spine. Try to keep it as you drop the shoulders. So you're growing even taller. 
One more time. Inhale, lift. And drop the shoulders down, but keep stretching the neck and the spine nice and long. And now we're going to take a little stretch to one side, keeping some tension in the band. And lengthen back up. And let's inhale up and over. So you can breathe into these ribs and open up your waist. Exhale back up. Relax the shoulders down. Inhale, stretch those side ribs open. Exhale, come back up. Relax the shoulders down. And one more time this way. Reaching up and over and then stack back up. Drop the shoulders. Now we're going to try to bend the elbows and draw the band behind our head. Just to here. And then stretch back up. And if that feels like too much pull in your shoulders, take a wider grip. And don't go as far, just go to where it feels good in your shoulders. You can maybe go to here. If it feels good to go to here, go, go for that. If it feels good to go all the way down, pulling your elbows into your waist, go all the way down. And then start to slide that band back up your back like you're shaking off all the hair off your back. <laughs> and then drop the shoulders. Hopefully you don't have much hair on your back, but you never know. <laughs> slide it down, down, down as far as it feels good, and then bend the elbows and slide back up, reaching up to the sky. One more time, draw the elbows down. And wherever you are, if you're here, stay there. If you're all the way down, stay there. Lift your chest for a moment. Try to open your collarbone up and breathe in. And then bend your elbows and bring the arms back up. This time we're gonna round forward. Pulling on the band, you're gonna drop your chin to your chest. Round forward as much as it feels good. Keep pulling on your band and then roll back up. Inhale. So we're going to alternate between opening the shoulders of the chest, lifting the chest, and then lifting the band up and over your head. Pull on it as you round forward. Inhale, stack it up. Bend the elbows, slide it down however far it feels good, lifting your chest. And then bending your elbows up over your head and rounding forward. One last time, inhale, reach up. Bending those elbows, sliding it down your back. Lifting the chest. And bending the elbows, stacking up the head. Reaching your arms up and over. Keep pulling on your band as you drop the chin towards your chest. And now just leave your arms down, but roll your head back. And give your shoulders a little circle. Very nice. So let me just see if uh, Carolyn and Dusty made it on there. Did you guys make it on there? I'm not seeing them. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't think they made it. Okay. So let me have you just practice pressing the band into your thighs now, opening your collarbone up. And when you do that, you want to prevent your rib cage from pushing forward. So we're trying to open the chest and the collarbone, but not the rib cage popping out. So we want to keep them pulled in with our abdominals as you pull back with your arms. And then we're going to take a little bend of the knees, send your tail back. You don't have to go very deep on this first one, just wherever it feels good. But make sure that your knees are in line with your toes, or going straight forward, and you're giving that pull on the band. And then press the band into your thighs, opening your collarbone, inhale. Exhale, reach forward and pull on the band, little bend. You can bounce here a little bit, softening the hips. And then stack back up, opening the chest. Inhale. Again, exhale, bending, maybe going a little deeper if that feels good in your hips and knees. And then stack back up, open the chest. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, press. And we're trying to keep the spine neutral. So I don't want you to arch your back, but I also don't want you to round your back. So keep it neutral as you reach forward, just folding at the hips and the knees and the ankles. Press that into your thighs. We'll do two more. Inhale, reach forward. Folding, folding, folding. Exhale, stand up. Opening the chest. And last one, reaching forward. Feel that long spine here. And exhale, stand up. Opening the chest. Now we're going to come down to the floor. And I'm going to give you two choices. Actually, I'll give you three choices. You can come down to the floor either with that squat and you just keep dropping, dropping, dropping your tail, boom, <laughs> fall on the floor. Or, if I had my feet a little closer together, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> or you can take one foot back and come down with a kneeling squat, and then you can come down to the floor that way. Or you can come down to the floor 
rolling down through the spine, putting the hands on the floor, putting your feet together, bending your knees, and sitting on your side. So however you want to come down to the floor is great. You can also come up with your own version, just do it very mindfully. So, let's place those feet out in front of you now. And we can place the band off to the side where you'll be for now. Actually, I'm going to have you try to straighten your legs out. And this is where you may want to use your pillow. So, if it's more comfortable to sit on a pillow with your legs straight out in front of you, that takes some of the tension out of the quads and hips. I might face you for now. But just make sure, make sure you're comfortable and you can sit up nice and tall. You're not slouching. So you feel that spine lengthening up. And we're going to take the arms out in front of us and just reach one arm behind you and start to look behind you as you inhale. Exhale, come back to the front. Lift your spine and then rotate to the other side. And come back to the front. Again, rotating that arm behind, stacking up the spine nice and tall, and back to center. Again, rotate and lift the spine up, and stacking back up. Now we're going to take the arm up and around behind us, and then circle down and back to center. So the arm's going up, circling behind, and down, and front. Inhale, reach up, lengthening the spine behind you, and circle down. <laughs> Inhale, reach up, and around. Just ignore that. My home phone never rings. <laughs> one more time, up, and around. And one more time on the other side. Lift, circle, and bring it around to the front. Good, now just let your arms come down behind you, lean back, and bounce your knees. Just give your knees a little bounce. Maybe do a little windshield waiver back and forth. Good, just let your hips kind of release. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, so now we're going to take this pillow out, and I'm going to have you bring yourself down to the floor. So hold on, just put your pillow on your lap. Reach the arms out in front of you. Reach long through the heels, and try to sink the belly, and try to roll down through the spine nice and slowly. You can take those arms over your head, give yourself a nice stretch at the bottom, and then circle the arms around and back down by your sides, grab your pillow, and bend your knees. So we're gonna take our right knee up, and we're gonna press the pillow into that right knee, so or into your thigh. So just try to press a little bit gently into your thigh and sink your belly down into the floor and try to flatten your lower back into your mat. We're doing that as we exhale. As you inhale, just relax back to neutral. And again, exhale, press on the thigh, sink the belly, try to flatten the back. So you're starting to find those lower, deeper belly muscles. And then release. And what I don't want you to feel is a bunch of grabbing in the front of the thigh. So if you were doing this without the pillow, it would look like this. And you just want to use your abdominals to move the leg towards you rather than the leg muscles to move the leg towards you. So you're gently pressing the, the leg away from you, but you're drawing it towards you with the belly. And really, so it's, you don't have to push super hard to find those belly muscles. Just a gentle pressure and release. And let's do one more. So we're kind of rolling in and out of neutral, going into our flat back as we exhale and rolling back to neutral as you inhale. One more time, exhale, a little gentle pressure, and inhale back to neutral. And switch legs, take the other leg up. Pillow on the front of the leg. As you exhale, belly sinks down into the spine, the spine sinks down into the floor. And roll back to neutral, inhale. Exhale, a little pressure on the pillow, scoop the belly, press on the thigh, and release. And you can also be pressing down with your opposite foot. So my right foot is on the floor, I'm pressing down into that foot to help me sink the belly and find that flat back. And let's do one more. Exhale, press, draw the belly deeper, 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 and release. Very good. And go ahead and take that pillow up to the side. 
Keep one leg lifted. If you want to hold on to the back of the leg as you pull up the other leg to tabletop, you can, or you can just lift both legs into tabletop, making sure you feel nice and stable. And we're going to go into our flat back here. So again, if you need support, you can put your feet on a chair or on the couch. But we're going to try to just roll into a flat back and release. So now we're using those lower belly muscles again to find our flat back and then roll back to neutral. Exhale, find it and release. Exhale, find it and release. Now if you notice your shoulders and neck tightening or tensing up, you can hold on to the back of your head and lift your elbows towards the ceiling and that will help you stay connected with your shoulder blades down your back. So you won't feel quite as much pull in the front of the shoulders. We're gonna do two more. Exhale, belly to spine, spine to floor. And last one, thank you. <laughs> you do Pilates with me? I know. All right, bring your arms down to the floor now. And we're gonna do our tiny steps, but we're gonna try to do it in our flat back. We're gonna try to sustain a flat back. So as you exhale, belly pulls down into the floor and then reach the right toe or the left toe down and tap it lightly. And inhale it back up and release. And exhale, pull the belly down and reach the other toe down. So it's pretty slow. We're trying to find our flat back first and then tap the toe. And when you bring it back up, you can release for a second. Exhale and then tap, uh-oh. Katie's touching the computer. <laughs> it protects the computer. From Kitty. So keep alternating sides. All right, you stay there, Kitty. Her name, her nickname is Satana for a reason. <laughs> and inhale up. And one more time on each side, flattening the back into the floor, tapping the toe lightly. Inhale, release. And one more time on the other side, scooping that belly downward, tapping the toe and then release back up. Good, now just hug your knees into your chest. You can open the knees apart and just do a little gentle rock on your lower back. And while we're holding our knees here, I'm gonna turn and face you this way so you have a different angle. I want you to just open the knees apart and circle them around. So you're pulling them in towards the body, open and around. Pull them in towards you, circle them apart and around. And do that two more times, just to start getting some synovial fluid in those hip joints. And then we're gonna reverse. Take it open, circling around. And open, circling around. Open, and one more time. And don't worry so much about stabilizing your spine. It's okay if it moves a little bit around here. And then we're gonna bring our feet back down to the floor. And I'm going to have you spread out into a giant X shape. Now, if you need a pillow, you can put the pillow over your head, whatever's more comfortable. But I want you to find that giant X shape on the floor. Hopefully, you have enough space to <laughs> spread out a little bit. But once you find your X, we're going to try to reach your uh, right fingers towards your left toes. So we're going to reach towards our left toes. We're going to lift the head. We're going to keep reaching towards the left toes and see if you can roll up. And you can use your back hand to help you Press yourself up. And when you get to the top, you're going to keep stretching towards your left toes. And you're going to roll down the spine, using that left hand to support you, and then back into your X shape. So we're taking one half of that X and trying to reach it towards the other side. Now I'm switching arms, so my left arm is reaching towards my right toes. Along that diagonal, stretch, and then roll back down. And back to your X shape. Good. And try the other side again. Rolling through the arm, lifting the head, the shoulders, the ribs. You're moving sequentially through the body. And then stretching over that leg. And moving sequentially through the body, rolling through the spine to come back down to the floor. Inhale. Kind of folding across your body here. Other arm, peels off the floor, head lifts, shoulders lift, ribs lift. Use that hand if you start to feel stuck, pushing it down into the floor, stretching along that diagonal, and rolling back down slowly. 
and unpeeling the arm. Good. So now we're going to go into a circle. I'm going to scoot back just a little bit. So we're going to take our right arm over our head. You can watch one time if you want. Over to that left arm. And then we're going to draw a circle down towards our foot. This is where you're going to need that hand to help you. Reaching towards your left foot, reaching towards your right foot. Now your left arm is going to take over as the circling arm, reaching along the diagonal. And then back to where you started. So we're drawing a big, big circle. I feel like that Leonardo da Vinci <laughs> man painting or sketch. So I'm going to start with the other side now. Over the head to the hand. Draw that circle. It doesn't have to be graceful or beautiful. Reach towards the right foot. Circle to the left foot. Keep circling around. Now your right hand is taking over. Over to that diagonal. And all the way back to your X. I hope that's making sense. Let's try it again. Reaching over the head. You're kind of looking at your hand with your eyes. Keep looking at your hand as you reach towards the toes. Rolling across. Take the other hand now. Look at that hand as you circle back around to the diagonal and back to your X shape. And one more time, going the other way. Circling over the head. So make as big a circle as you can. Reaching along between the toes, reaching along that circle, looking at your hand, and then coming back to that X shape. <laughs> now from here, we're going to curl over to one side into a little fetal position. And then we're going to open back up to your X shape. And we're going to curl over to the other side into your fetal position. And when you're doing this, you really want to feel like your center is dictating the movement. So it's a contraction here in your belly button. You're contracting around it, and then you're expanding away from it, reaching in all different directions. And contract around to the other side. And opening back up. Inhale. Exhale, contracting over to one side. Opening back up. And one more time. Contract over to the other side. And opening back up. Very nice. Let's bring those arms down. Walk those feet back to just a bent knee position. And I'm going to have you lift one leg up at a time. And again, you can hold on to the backs of the legs if you want. And we're going to open the legs and close the legs. We're going to keep the toes together, just like this. So toes stay together, but the knees open up and close. Now I'm going to have you take your arms on the inside of your legs. So if you see me from the side, <laughs> I'm putting my palms together in between my knees. I'm going to squeeze my arms with my knees. And then my arms are going to push my knees open. And then my knees are going to squeeze my arms back together. So I'm providing some resistance. I'm pushing against my legs and my legs are providing the resistance and then my legs are pushing against my arms and my arms are providing the resistance. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like a thigh master <laughs> with your arms. You guys remember the Susan, what was it her name? I can't remember her name. From Three's Company. <laughs> Susan something. Anyway, we're giving ourselves the thigh master by squeezing with our inner thighs here and then resisting as we push the knees open. Let's do three more. Squeezing together and resisting open. And squeeze together. Try to find that corset tightening as you're squeezing the knees together. Squeeze, feel the pelvic floor engage. And then pushing with your arms open. And one more time, squeezing together. Now bring your knees together and take your hands on the outsides of your legs. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to push our hands inward and try to open up the knees. And then we're going to push the legs together, but try to resist. So your knees are pressing into your hands, and then your hands are trying to push your knees together, but your legs are resisting. So it's the opposite of what we just did. Inhale apart, again, back from walk. <laughs> Squeeze back together. So toes stay together, but knees press open. And you are providing the resistance. And one more. Open. Inhale. And close. 
Thank you, Jackson. Exhale. Now just take those arms down by your sides. Take one foot down and the other foot down. And stretch the legs out for a moment. Just see how the legs are feeling. Give them a little wiggle and maybe give a good lay down. <laughs> and then bend your knees. Now let's take our hands behind the back of the head. I'm going to remove my pillow. I don't need that guy anymore. Weaving the hands together at the base of your head, we're going to float your elbows up so you can see them in your peripheral vision. Keep the pelvis heavy on the floor. Keep your shoulders relaxed. And then just float your head off the floor a little bit. Let your head get heavy in your hands. We're going to come back to just here. We're not going to come all the way back down to the floor. So just to where your head is really relaxed into those hands. And then we're going to exhale and try to use your abdominals to pick your shoulder blades up off the floor. Look at your belly button. And then roll back down. Inhale, just to where your head is heavy in the hands. Exhale again to curl up. And inhale to roll down. Now you can roll up and see your pelvis. Is your pelvis trying to tuck under? Can you keep it neutral? Can you feel the weight of your sacrum staying heavy on the floor as you curl that upper spine? Stabilizing that lower spine. Let's do four more. Exhale up. Head is heavy, inhale back down. Head is heavy, exhale up. Pelvis stays neutral, inhale down, shaky. Head is heavy in your hands, exhale. Two more times, and inhale back down. Head stays heavy, shoulders stay dropped. Exhale one more time, relaxing the neck, and coming all the way down. And rest your head on the floor. Okay. So now we're going to try this a little more with a little more challenge. We're going to lift the legs up to tabletop. And again, you don't have to have the legs up in tabletop and keep them on the floor, or you can rest them on a chair or a couch. But we're going to lift the head, just let it relax in the hands, keep the shoulders dropped. We're going to curl ourselves up, and then we're going to rotate to the left side and try to reach your elbow towards your left knee. And then back to center, inhale. And now rotate to the right. And back to center. So we're not coming back down. We're staying up as we rotate. And center. Try to keep those hips square. Don't let the hips twist. Just that upper spine is twisting. Exhale as you rotate. Inhale back to center. Exhale, rotate. Inhale back to center. Exhale, twist. And center, one more. Exhale, twist. And center, and draw the head back down, lengthening your spine into the floor. Let your arms come down and let your feet come down. Very nice. We're gonna take our right leg and cross it over our left leg for a moment. Arms can come out to the sides with palms facing up. And we're gonna do a little spine twist. So we're gonna slowly start to rotate the knees over just see how far that feels good. If it starts to feel a little too intense, you can grab your pillow. You can prop your legs up if you need to. You can prop them up a little closer. But let your head rotate in the opposite direction, looking over that back hand. And we're going to use that back hand to draw a circle around us. So we're going to start towards the feet. We're going to reach the hand down towards your feet. We're going to circle across the body. And as we do, we roll onto our side. Circle the arm up over the head, looking at your hand if you want to, or reach it behind you. And let's reverse the circle. Up over the head, circling towards the other fingers, down towards the knees and the feet, and then looking at your hand as you come behind. Let's do one more circle each direction. Because it feels so good. Reaching forward and up. Rotating behind yourself, looking back at your hand, and then reverse it one more time. Circling forward and down, opening the chest up, breathe in. Now use your bottom knee to push yourself back to center. We're going to unwind the legs and cross the other leg on top. Let your knees slowly go over to the other side. See how far that feels good to you. It's really up to you how much range of motion you have here. And then looking back towards your backhand, 
Just hold that stretch for a couple of breaths. Noticing where you feel that stretch. And then we're going to start with that back hand reaching down towards the feet. Circling forward, so you're rolling all the way onto your side, reaching that arm forward. When you're moving the arm like this, you don't want to move it just from this shoulder joint. You want to move the whole torso. You want to feel your ribs lifting, your shoulder blade lifting, your collarbone lifting, and circling with you. So you get a nice feeling of how your arm is connected to that whole body. And then one more time, reverse the circle. Feel the movement starting from the spine and from the rib cage, rather than from that shoulder joint. Open the chest, inhale, and circle one more time the other way, up and over, reaching way far in front of you, down, and behind you. Take another inhale. Use your bottom knee to push your top knee back to center and then unwind those legs. Very good. All right, so we're gonna stretch the left leg out. We're gonna hug the right knee into the chest. Give it a nice little stretch here. I'm gonna have you find your stretchy band, which I think is way over here. Find your band. It doesn't have to be stretchy. It could be a belt. <clears throat> and place your right foot into it and crisscross the band around your foot. So we're gonna stretch that leg up. And if you need to have your other leg bent, that's fine too whatever feels better to your hamstrings and your hips. We're gonna pull the elbows down into the floor and try to open that collarbone without arching the rib cage off the mat. So ribs are heavy, belly is sinking. I'm gonna to try to point the toe and press the leg down all the way as low as you can. Now, once you get your leg down, lift your head and look at your feet for a second. Make sure your legs aren't super far apart. They're kind of squeezing your midline. Then you're going to flex your foot and lift your leg back up, let your head come down. <laughs> the head gets to stay down now. Point your toe and press that leg towards the floor, drawing the belly in. Flex and lift the leg back up. What we want to feel is a little squeeze of your bottom and your hamstring to press the leg down, and then releasing the bottom and hamstring to lift the leg up. And point and press, zipping up your tight jeans, flex and lift. Point and press, feeling the tummy drawing up and in, flex and lift. And two more times, point and press, flex and lift. And last one, point and press, and flex and lift it back up. Now we're gonna do a little circle. So instead of just going straight down and up, we're gonna go across the body a little bit, then down, then out and up. And again, your range of motion is entirely unique to you. So however big or small this feels good, go for it. Keep your pelvis nice and square. So we don't want to roll back and forth on our spine and pelvis. See if you can just move that leg in that hip socket. Two more. Circling around, down and back up. And one more, circling around. And then we're going to reverse. We're going to take it open and pressing down and around and up. And your foot can be pointing or flexing. Leg is going to be doing a little bit of external rotation, a little bit of internal rotation as you go out and in. But it kind of does that on its own. You don't have to really think about that. And then one more circle this direction. Trying to keep that pelvis nice and stable. And then bring it back up, just flex your foot, give your leg another stretch here. Breathing into the back of the leg. And then we're gonna bend that knee and soften the leg so that you can put your other foot into the band and bring your other leg down. Crisscross your band or your belt. And either straightening that other leg or bending it, it's up to you. But we're just going to start by pointing the toe, keep your elbows pulled back, shoulders pulled back, and try to press the leg down. Stay there for a moment, lift your head, look at your alignment, make sure you're straight. <laughs> Flex your foot and lower your head and bring that leg back up. 
And we're gonna point and press, squeezing that glute, flex and lift. As you're squeezing the bottom, you're zipping up, you're pulling up through the tummy. And then flex and bring it up. So this is not just a passive exercise. Lots of things are working. Glutes, tummy, arms, leg. Your standing leg is even working to reach long away from you to help you stabilize. Flex and lift. Point and rest. Flex and lift. Point and press. One more time. Flex and lift. Now we're going to draw our circle. So you can point your toe or flex whatever feels good. I'm going to do a little sickle as I go across and then down and around and up and across. And just explore your range of motion here. Where does it feel good in my hip? Where does it feel bad? Where does it feel tight? I don't want to say good and bad because I like to make observations without thinking in terms of good or bad. <laughs> but just, where does it feel different? Maybe you're getting clicky or glitchy parts. And let's do two more this direction. Keep thinking about your standing leg and your long spine, your head and your toe reaching away from each other. And let's go the other way. Inhale, open, and circling down and around and up. Inhale, open, keeping that pelvis nice and steady. Imagine your cup of tea just sitting on the front of your pelvis here. Circling around and up, good, two more. And last one, open, down and around. And up and just give your foot a little stretch, flexing the toes back. You can give that leg a little pull towards you if that feels good, breathing into the back of that leg. Relaxing the shoulders and the neck. And then bend the knee and release that foot all the way back down to the floor. Oh. <laughs> like I have jelly legs now. Let's bend those knees again. And we're going to pull the knees into your chest one at a time, holding on to your shins. And we're going to just do a little side to side rock first, just to get your spine feeling comfortable pressing into the floor. And then you're going to just lift your head up towards your knees. And we're going to start to do a little tiny rock back and forth. So you can use a little bit of momentum from your legs, but think of pushing your shins into your hands and scooping your belly so that you can really round your lower back into the floor. And eventually see if that momentum can bring you up to a balance point. And try not to put your feet on the floor when you get there. Flex your toes up towards the ceiling, relax your shoulders down, and then go all the way back and all the way back up to that balance point. So we're rolling like a ball, we're inhaling as we go back, exhaling, oops, finding that balance hopefully. Inhale back, exhale up. Inhale back, exhale up. Two more, back and up. Find that lift of your chest. And one more, back. And we'll stay up this time. Very nice, stretch your legs out in front of you. We're gonna roll over onto our tummies now. You can place this pillow underneath your pelvis if you have any lower back issues or if, you're, if extension just doesn't feel great to your lower back, you can try it with the pillow under your pelvis. And we're gonna take the hands out wide apart into goal pose shape with the forehead resting on the floor. So you can also do this without the pillow, but the pillow feels kind of nice if you wanna try it. So press your pelvis into the floor or into the pillow, just squeezing your glutes. Legs can be open, they don't have to be closed. And once you get that pressure down with the pelvis, your shoulders should stay relaxed, but you're going to try to just float your head up in line with the spine. So head and tail are reaching in opposite directions. Your shoulders are nice and soft. And then releasing back down, inhale. This is also great if you have tight hip flexors to give yourself a little less extension in the back. So we're going to do that again. We're going to press the pelvis down, squeeze your glutes, then lift your tummy and lift your head up. 
And just feel the length in your spine. Keep elongating. And then come back down and rest. So we're really just coming up to neutral. We're not going into extension yet. So we're going to try that two more. And pressing down, floating the head up. It's like a teeter-totter. The more you push down with the pelvis, the more easily your head's going to float up. And then release it. And last time, press down with the pelvis, float the head up. Now to add a little more challenge here, try floating the legs up and then floating the elbows and the hands up. Ah! Work, 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 work. Breathe and come back down and rest. Breathe in. We're going to try that two more times. So you can add the legs and the arms or you can just keep practicing this or you can just practice with the legs. It's up to you. So we can try all of it. Pressing the pelvis down. Nice long spine, the legs float up. If you want to add the arms, keep that collarbone opening. Spread out the fingers. Inhale and then come back down. Last one, press down with the pelvis. Squeeze that bottom, lift the tummy, lift the head. Feel the stretch in your spine. Legs float up, but they're still stretching away from you. And then arms maybe float up as well. Hold, 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 and release. Cool. Very nice. Now, if you want to go up a little higher into extension, if that feels good to your body, again, start with the pelvis pressing down. And then use your arms to help you push away from the floor. Think of your chest lifting, your belly lifting, shoulders drawing away from your ears. Inhale. Exhale. You're going to pull your head away from your tail to come back down. Now, if that does not feel good, or if you're worried about that one, you could try coming up just to your elbows and then really pushing your chest forward and up. So that the extension's really in your upper back, not in your lower back. Keep your glutes engaged, your tummy engaged, and then come back down. So that's the modification. And even if that doesn't feel good, just come up to that neutral position and keep working those back extensions without lifting up higher. So try that again, breathe in. Pelvis is anchoring, lifting the tummy, the head floats up. If you want, you can use your hands, or you can just start to reach your chest forward and up. Breathe in when you get as high as you want to go, and then coming slowly back down, pulling your head away from that tail, and releasing. Last one. We're going to practice lifting up. Pelvis anchoring down, floating up to neutral, shoulders relaxed. Maybe the chest starts to push forward and up. Maybe the arms start to push you away from the floor. Inhale, exhale, and slowly melting down. Very good. Now we're just gonna take our hands underneath our forehead. If you still have that pillow under, that's fine. We're gonna bend our knees, and we're gonna flex the feet and bring the heels together and the knees apart so you're nice and open with your knees. So it's kind of this frog position. Now when you get there, we're going to start to, again, press the pelvis down. So when you press the pelvis down, your glutes engage, right? Your tummy is going to lift away from the floor or the pillow. And you don't have to do anything else. <laughs> you just have to hold that for a moment, feeling the contraction of the back of the leg and the hamstring. And then relax. And if you have sciatica or if this bothers it at all, Try doing it in parallel. You won't be able to go very high. <laughs> it's more about just pushing the pelvis into the floor. Let's see if parallel feels better. It's actually harder for me to do parallel. So I probably should be practicing that one. <laughs> but if you feel really like you can keep the length in your back, maybe try adding a little lift of your thighs. You can even just think about lifting. You don't have to actually lift. Because it's small. If you go too big, it's going to really arch your lower back. And we want to keep the leg in your lower back. And really feel the work here in the glute and the hamstring, opening up the front of the hip. And one more time. Lengthen the spine. Squeeze the bottom. And release. Good. And let's stretch those legs out. Press yourself either back to child's pose or to uh, let, just roll onto your back and hug your knees into your chest. You can also put that pillow right here, if that feels good, and help you stretch the back. And 
And find your breath here. Really take a nice deep inhale. And a nice slow, long exhale. And take your hands and just walk them over to the left side of your mat and breathe into your lower back on that right side. And then walk the hands over to the right side, breathing into your left back. And back to center. Now let's come up to all fours for a moment. And this is where you could either put the pillow under your knees if your knees don't like being on the floor, or you can come up to standing and use a chair and just hold on to the chair instead of to the floor. But we're gonna tuck our toes under, and I'll show you this from this direction. I'm trying to keep my ankles and toes together, and I'm just gonna try to lean back and give my feet a little stretch. So getting the soles of your feet and your toes opening up as you lean back, and you don't have to lean back all the way, and then come back up. And do that again, just a little lean back, see how that feels. And forward. And a little stretch back. And forward. Now keeping the toes tucked under, we're gonna try to push the floor away with the arms. Push and lift those knees up. Keep your tabletop position with your spine. Imagine you have a table setting, tablecloth, chair, uh, cups, knives, forks, plates, everything else on your back. You're keeping it there. And then come back down and stretch back again. And try that again. Just pushing the floor away with your hands. Keep your neutral spine, nice long neck, nice long reach through the head and the tail. Lift the knees, hold for five, four, three, two, one. And come back down. And if wrists are an issue, I would take your roller, put your elbows on that roller, like so. So you don't have to be putting weight on your wrists. Because we're gonna do one more plank. And again, if you're on the chair, that's fine too. This will work too. You're holding onto the edges of the chair. And you're gonna float those knees up. And we're just gonna walk it out. We're gonna take the right foot out, left foot out, walk it back in, right foot, left foot. Try that again. Right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. Now start with your left foot. Left foot, right foot. Left foot comes in, right foot comes in. Keep the table setting on your back. Let it step. Left foot and left foot. And bring the knees down and come back to a rest pose. Very nice, very nice. All right, so we're gonna come back to all fours and just do a little stretch. So we're gonna curve the tail under, come into your cat pose, rounding the spine, and then arching the spine, letting your belly drop, letting your shoulder blades squeeze together and your chest open forward and up. And again, rounding the spine, pushing those back ribs up into the ceiling, breathing into your stretch here in your lower back. And one more time. Letting the spine arch, opening up your sit bones, chest reaching forward and up, and then back to neutral. Let's come on down to our sides. And I'm gonna have you start just laying on your side and holding your head here. We're gonna try to straighten out your legs. <laughs> legs can be slightly in front of you if you feel like your balance is gonna be challenged with legs in line with your body. But the trick to laying on your side like this is to try to pull your ribs away from the, the floor. And as you're lifting the rib cage, your shoulder has to draw away from your ear too. So you can't be shredding your shoulders. You have to be pulling the ribs away and lifting. Now if this is really uncomfortable in your neck and shoulders or your ribs, take your arms straight, but still try to lift your bottom ribs away from the floor. Top hand can be resting on the floor in front of you. Now we're just gonna try to lift both legs up without letting our ribs drop into the floor, right? So we're not bending here. 
we're lifting with our inner thighs up and two. And if this hurts your hip, put that pillow right under your hip. Three, four, five, six. We're really using our core to keep us stable. Seven and eight. Now keep it lifted and try to scissor your legs apart and switch and switch and switch and five and six and seven and eight and then bring the legs together and go ahead and straighten the arm and come all the way down you can bend your knees nice job we're going to stay bent and i'm going to grab my pillow it's going to be more comfortable for my head and we're going to do our clamshells, but we're going to do them really small again. So I want you to feel like you're squeezing your sit bones together and opening the knees apart a little bit, but we're not trying to open up as wide as we can. So we're just trying to feel the beginning of that rotation, which happens right by your sit bone. So you can put your fingers on your top sit bone and kind of feel the contraction and the release. The contraction and the release. Contract and release. Tiny little contraction and release. I forgot to count. Do two more. Contract and release. Like you're squeezing those sit bones to open up the knee and release. Good job. Let's go ahead and switch sides. You can either roll over or I'm going to flip around all the way so you can still see me from the front. And we're going to start with our head supported by that bottom hand. Legs are stretched out slightly in front of you if you need to, but you're going to try to lift your ribs away from your from the floor. Shoulder draws away from your ear. Hand can either be here, or if you want to make it harder for yourself, you can also take your hand behind your head and use it on the floor. So we're going to try to lift those legs up away from the floor without scrunching up our waist or dropping our spine. So our spine stays long. Lift. Lift, three, you can also flex your feet here, four, five, six, seven, we're gonna hold eight, hold. Now split the legs open and switch. Two, switch, three, switch, four, keep lifting here, switch. Inhale, switch, six, switch, seven, switch, and eight, and switch. And bring the legs together, bend the knees, come all the way down. You can rest your head on your elbow or on a pillow. And we're gonna try to squeeze your sit bones to open the knee. One, and lower, I'm gonna count this time. Two, and lower. You can feel your sit bone pulling down towards the other sit bone. Four, breathing in and out. Five, and six, and seven, and one last time. Eight, and release. And let's go ahead and roll onto our backs now. Take your bottom leg, the one that was on the floor, and cross it over the top in a figure four stretch. You can leave it here, or you can pull that knee closer to your body, grabbing that thigh on the underside, gently pulling it in and doing a little side to side rock if that feels good. Try to keep the shoulders relaxing into the floor. If you have a chair or a couch, you can also rest your foot up on the chair or the couch. Ah, just give it a little stretch. And then we're going to switch sides. Hug that knee into your chest gently, rocking from side to side. Nice. One more side to side rock. And then go ahead and unwind those legs. We're going to use those legs to roll up again. So you can either hold onto the back or the front of your shins. 
So back of the thighs in front of the shins. And just start to lift your head off the floor, press your legs away. You can do a few rocks and rolls to come up to a balance. Draw your shoulders down. Let's bring our feet down to the floor. And we're going to come on to all fours again and lift the knees and the hips up towards the ceiling, giving yourself a little downward dog stretch. So let's do a little calf stretch here, just kind of treading the heels one at a time. Stretch and then switch. And you can stretch your feet this way too. Lifting one heel way up, getting those toes stretching, the soles of your feet stretching. And then reach both heels down and start to walk the hands towards the feet. Rocking your weight from right foot to left foot. Let the head drop, let the neck lengthen. Bend your knees if you need to. And then we're going to roll up through the spine, really lifting the belly, lifting those back ribs, and squeeze your glutes. You want to feel the squeeze of the glutes and the hamstrings. They're like a pulley system, rolling your spine up and pulling your tail down towards the floor. Head stacks up last, give those shoulders a nice little roll back. Everything else gets a shake. And I ran out of time. I'm sorry, I was going to use the roller <laughs> at the end, but I totally ran out of time. So let me switch you guys back to being able to 